My name is Rev. Rachel Harrison, and this is the Recover Your Soul podcast, a spiritual path to a happy and healthy life. I started Recover Your Soul after having profound changes in my life from my recovery of alcoholism, control addiction, and codependency. I was guided to share the tools and principles of spirituality and soul recovery to help others transform their lives as mine was transformed. For us to overcome external circumstances, we must first turn the attention to ourselves, focusing on inner change. Outer positive results in our lives will follow. As a spiritual coach, I can support you on your path to make real changes that will bring you a life of peace, happiness, connection, and abundance. Visit the website recoveryoursoul.net to book coaching sessions, read the blog, listen to some of my original music, and subscribe to receive email updates. I think of Recover Your Soul as a community. Follow us on social media and join the private Facebook group to support each other and connect. For an extra episode each week and to support this podcast, become a Patreon member or subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul. Hello and welcome to the Recover Your Soul podcast. I thank you for choosing to spend your time with me here today, whether you're coming back again or this is your first time. I recently was asking for guidance and the words, it is as I choose to see it, came to me clearly. It is as I choose to see it. And I wanted to go ahead and explore that in this episode because in soul recovery, what we're doing is we're turning the attention to ourselves. We're changing our perspective. We're allowing for a shift in how we see things. And in working with people and doing soul recovery coaching, it's profound to watch the changes that happen so quickly. And a huge part of that change comes when you make the decision that you're going to begin to see things differently. It is as I choose to see it. When I was in the depths of my addiction as an alcoholic and in my addiction as a controlling mom and wife and manager of a business, what I can recognize now is how easy it is to be caught up in wanting to look on the outside and wishing that things were different, that people behaved differently, that relationships were different, that people said things differently, that they acted differently, that they would respond differently, that they would do what I asked of them and not necessarily what is going on for them. I had a hard time allowing myself to be okay with what is, allowing myself to just see the situation, the people, the circumstances for what it is without a level of desire for it to be different. And so what I can recognize now is that my mind was choosing to see it in a darkness, was choosing to see it in a light of frustration, that I was making a choice to recognize the things that were out there as being quote unquote bad. Now, I'm not saying that there wasn't stuff going down because there was major stuff going down in my life. And it is definitely mm, more calm now. As I've said, the boys are now young men living on their own in California. Rich and I are both actively living an alcohol-free life. There are definite changes that have happened in our life that are the first and foremost changes of taking the chaos out of our lives. But even then, even then, I recognize that I still, on a regular basis, can catch myself starting to slip, can catch myself starting to fall away from the knowledge and the knowing that it is as I choose to see it. So recently, Bodhi was in town. If you listen to his episode from last week, we just had such a great time and it was so marvelous and wonderful to have him here. And yet every single time the kids come back for a visit, 
even though their rooms have been reallocated to an office and to a music room, they don't have anything here at their house that they can walk back into and say, oh, this is my room or these are my things. They literally are visitors coming to visit into a home that they used to live in, but they no longer have a place in. And what I notice and recognize is we are still working on learning how to interact with each other in ways that are about us all being grown adults instead of having this family system and going back into old patterns and into old communication tools and ways of being. What I recognized in that was I watched myself go into old patterns and having such gratitude that I could catch it, that I would start to think or say a certain thing or start to anticipate somebody's needs and think that it's my job to take care of those needs and that I can step back and almost immediately recognize that tension that comes into my body when I'm doing that and old feelings and old patterns and the uncomfortable feelings that are inside of me. And I was able to do the tools and the practices that we learn in soul recovery to take a pause, to step back and be curious, to wonder what's going on underneath that tension, sometimes to allow myself to have space for myself, to step out of the situation and come back to my own self and say, what is it that I'm trying to fix? What is it that I'm trying to control? What is it that I'm trying to manipulate or alleviate some sort of stress, some sort of communication, some sort of situation that in the past would have blown up into something? And those feelings, those tendencies, those ways of being run so deep that we have to be gentle with ourselves and not judge ourselves or condemn ourselves for falling back into those patterns because we spent a lifetime building up those patterns and having those ways of interacting with each other and we're new in recovery. I'm only four and a half, almost not even four and a half years sober from alcohol and really probably only three years of diligent soul recovery work. So I'm not going to be without the old patterns right off the bat. It's going to take a minute. So when I found myself in those moments of discomfort in these family dynamics, I was so grateful that I could go back to these tools. And at one point, I asked my higher power for help. I could really feel that I was starting to go into a stress spiral. And in one of the bonus episodes, I talked about this and how to have tools to bring yourself forward, to allow yourself to connect with higher power when you're starting to be in a stressful situation. And so one of those tools that I use is to ask for help, to say, help me see this differently. Please help me see this differently. Help me see this in a healthier light. Help me see this not from the eyes of my past, not from the eyes of my pain, not from the eyes of my projection, but from truth. And that's when I clearly heard, it is as I choose to see it. And almost instantaneously, what I could recognize was these three adult human beings who have their own personalities and their own desires and their own needs and their own feelings and their own past bumping up against each other, just trying to figure out how we fit together now as adults. And all of my fear and all of my pain, all of that dissipated in the knowing that this is part of our curriculum of life, that we are here to grow and to expand. There's the saying that God only gives you what you can handle. And I like the idea that it's more that life gives you what you can grow from and what can allow you to be your fullest self. And I don't think any of us are quote unquote deserving of something of hardship. I am not somebody who believes that if somebody has cancer or some terrible disease that, that they 
brought it upon themselves and asked for it, that it's some punishment from God. That's not my particular take on it. I do think that when we are not conscious, when we're not aware, when we're not living from our truest, best self, that we can have energy stuck in our body, that we can have thoughts and emotions that can hold up how our systems work, and it can be easier for us to get sick. I don't think that we make, quote unquote, make ourselves sick or that we deserve to be sick. There's lots of people who have genetics for various diseases. There's all kinds of stuff. This human body is complicated and weird. And if any of you are on Facebook or Instagram and follow me on social media, you know that last week, Rich was working on one of his projects at work with a stone, and he had this big square stone up on a wall that he had just put mortar on, and he was thinking to himself, this stone is is a little tenuous, so I need to be a little careful with it. And so he was on it, and he knew that it might fall off. Well, it fell straight down to where his hand was passing by right at that moment, and literally cut off the tip of his middle finger on his right hand side. He had to have it amputated below the first knuckle. This was a huge, huge deal. And for somebody that is like Rich, who is involved in a million things, is very hands-on, he's a craftsman, he's a drummer in three bands that were booked all throughout the summer. He's one of those people, he's a paddler, he's one of those people that just does so many things and his hands are so important to him. Having this major part of your body taken off has been a really big deal and he's going to do an episode around it so I won't go into it too much, but what I have such gratitude for in our having this rich spiritual life and practicing these principles in all of our affairs and being in soul recovery was hearing my husband say, I'm so grateful that we are good in our spiritual life because this is a big deal. And without that, he said he knew that he would just spiral out into oblivion of darkness. And he's been able to hold it together. He's been able to see it as he chooses to see it. It is as he chooses to see it. And so what he's choosing to see is that he will recover, that this is a big deal, that he can allow himself to grieve losing this part of his body, that he can allow himself to have fear over finances. We're both self-employed and this is affecting his work. This is affecting everything he's doing and not fall into oblivion of think that everything's going to fall apart at this point. That's incredible. It is as I choose to see it. And since I've heard these words that came to me, they feel like they encompass so much of the soul recovery work that I've been doing. I feel like I see it everywhere. That when I'm interacting with somebody and maybe an old trigger starts to come up or they say something that makes you come into an ego space in yourself where you feel defensive or reactive in some way. These words, it is as I choose to see it, allows me to choose to make a decision for myself that I want to see it with love, that I want to see it with clarity, that I want to see it from the perspective of maybe more of the facts that are happening in the situation rather than me bringing with me all my baggage and all my stuff. And it's been incredibly profound for me. Also, after I had dealt with Rich with his finger and taken him to the doctor to have the checkup, and they said that he was in pretty good shape, just needed to be gentle with it, I had already set up to go on this trip to Santa Fe to go help my dad. And what was so lovely about having this new career where I get to be Rev Rachel and speak to you on these podcasts and and do coaching sessions with you and speak on Sundays at churches is I have a lot more flexibility and freedom. So when my dad called and asked if I was up for driving down and helping him on a project to organize and clean his art studio, I was able to do that. And that was such a gift because I didn't live with my dad after I was about seven years old. And the truth is, 
we've spent a lot of time together, but it's these little nuggets of time, generally with other people. There hasn't been a lot of just he and I one-on-one, -on -one, just kind of chill, doing whatever time. And it was a real blessing to be able to go down and help him with this project and just spend hours and hours each day sorting and organizing and cleaning and sometimes we talked and sometimes we didn't just this really special time he's 81 years old and you start to realize that the time is limited when we're younger we think that we have forever we think that there's going to be enough time for everything and I have such awareness now especially with losing my mom's house in December in the Marshall Fire in Louisville, and then Rich losing his finger, that awareness that everything changes in an instant. And then we can choose how we're going to see it. It is as I choose to see it. And that this time with my dad and with my mom in their later years of their life and in my midlife, this is really precious time. And so... What I noticed in this change in myself since I've done soul recovery is whatever hurt there was from the past and our parents, there's always many, many things that they didn't do or that they did do that caused us pain. That's part of parenting and being a child. That's just part of the curriculum, part of the journey. And that through soul recovery, through the allowing of turning the attention to myself recognizing my own feelings, my own needs, letting go of the judgment of others, seeing the value in the learning that happened in situations, allowing forgiveness for myself and for them, not in the forgiveness sense of what you did was okay, but that it is what it is, and I'm going to release the energy from it, that I don't have anything left that feels sticky or strange or hurtful or uncomfortable. And that feels really amazing because I've allowed myself to be in a place where I'm choosing how I see it. And we can't do anything about the past. We don't have control of a single other person. We don't have control of a single other thing. All we have is control of ourselves, our lives, our emotions, how we are going to choose to see things, how we are going to choose to perceive it. There are miracles that happen in that perception. And those changes, those shifts in how we see something, how we feel about it, letting go of blame, dropping the victim mentality in ourselves can have immense, immediate healing that can heal an entire lifetime of hurt and open up an entire future of possibility. Because it is as we choose to see it. Now we can have people in our lives who are actively dysfunctional, actively unhappy, actively doing things that are painful, hurtful to themselves, maybe to us, making choices to not be healthy in themselves. Those situations are the hardest ones to be able to utilize our soul recovery tools, our tools from Al-Anon, our tools from leaving behind codependence, our self-help, our spirituality, all these things that we're working on, we have to recognize and be gentle and give ourselves grace that it isn't necessarily easy. It may be simple, but it's not always easy to let go of the responsibility of somebody else's behavior, of somebody else's life. I have lots of people who are part of this community and listen to the podcast who have family members who are really struggling and making difficult choices. And we feel this part of us that wants to just show them a different way. We want them to be happy. We want them to stop using. We want them to stop doing whatever it is that is causing them so much pain. We have to recognize we didn't cause it. We can't control it and we can't cure it. 
This is one of the main Al-Anon principles that has been a lifeline for me. And we personally can choose how we're going to see it. It is as I choose to see it. So I can allow myself to see the truth in somebody who is hurting. The truth in somebody who is in a really dark and painful place. And I can have compassion for them. And I can have empathy for them. And I can choose to not be in what I call their movie. To not be part of a relationship where we're enabling their behavior, saving them, paying for this, saving them from whatever's happening. We don't want them to get in trouble. We don't want this to happen. We don't want that to happen. We begin to think that we're controlling it and we're choosing to see it as chaos. We're choosing to see it as something that we need to manipulate and control and do something about. We're choosing to see the dysfunction in the person as the person. And one of the things that I love about the idea of a detachment is, can you separate the person in their wholeness and in their beauty and in the truth of who they are as a soul from the dysfunction and the pain and the suffering of their addiction and the behaviors that come from that. And you can be angry and frustrated at that dysfunction and you can still love and have compassion and empathy for the soul. And you can allow them to have their own curriculum of life. And so many people, including myself, I was not willing to make change until I hit my own bottom, till I hit my own place in myself where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And every day that I chose to drink, every day that I chose to be depressed, every day that I chose to live in darkness, I knew I was making that choice. I was controlled by the power of addiction and I knew that only I could make it be different. No one else caused it. No one else could control it for me and no one else could cure it for me. I had to do it for myself. And when I recognize that it is as I choose to see it, that's such a profound statement that is in everything that is around me. Politics, my marriage, my kids, my neighborhood, my friends my own addictive personality style, the way that I choose to see everything. And I am going to make an active choice to choose love over fear. And this active choice that I make every day to choose love over fear, to ask for help when I'm starting to slip into old behaviors, to be able to connect to my higher power, to know that this spiritual path is the path to a happy and healthy life. This is the path to change. That my life is profoundly different than it was before because I am making different choices, healthier choices. Not that all my choices are healthy. I am conscious of how I am going to choose to see it. If you are interested in doing spiritual coaching with me and looking at some of these issues, looking at what your choices are. Are you interested in being on the soul recovery journey? I guarantee you that there's amazing shifts that happen when we flip the soul recovery switch, turn the attention to ourselves and work with somebody. I'd love to work with you to see our lives differently and let go of all that that no longer serves us and open to a life that is what you wish you had, that you can't even begin to imagine letting go of pain and suffering and depression and anxiety and addiction. I am so grateful for these tools that I have gathered in all these years that I've been really actively doing my soul recovery because I still have pain, I still have suffering. But it doesn't stay as long. It doesn't hurt as much. And the truth is that the baggage that I used to carry with me, the heavy stones of responsibility of everybody else that I drug behind me in these emotional negative sacks, lifted. The weight has been lifted. 
And I find that every day I see clearly, I see the beauty around me in new ways, and I have excitement about my life. I thank you for being on this journey with me. I look forward to being able to work on your soul recovery with you. Thank you for trusting me in your life. Until next time, namaste. Are you wondering, how do I go deeper on my path to soul recovery? Or how do I support this great podcast? Well, here's how. Here's your call to action. If you're ready for real inner change and would like to work directly with me, visit the website and book a coaching session. I'm here to support you on your unique path. I'm here to help you let go of the past, to deepen your connection with your higher power, whatever that is for you, and to discover and then step forward into a happy and healthy life. You can also become part of our soul recovery community. One way is to join the support group. It's the first Monday of every month. It's by Zoom from 6 to 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and you can register on the website to get your Zoom link. Recover your souls on social media. Of course, there's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, lots of ways to connect. And there's even a private Facebook group that will allow for more communication and conversation about soul recovery. There is also an extra bonus episode every Friday if you are an Apple Podcast subscriber or Patreon member. I'd also love all of the listeners to subscribe on the website so that I can keep you informed on what's going on with the podcast, the community, with me, and anything that's up and coming and new and great about soul recovery. Also, if you just take a little bit of time to give me five stars, a quick review, and to share the podcast with your friends and family, we're helping even more people to have soul recovery in their lives. If this podcast is providing you spiritual nourishment and inspiration, thank you, thank you for going to the website and pushing the donate button, whatever donation feels right to you. This means so much to me because I have this enormous mission of sharing soul recovery with the world and your donations, your bookings, your subscriptions, your being part of this community is helping that to happen. Together, we can do the work that will recover your soul.